And speaking of judges, brings us to our last story. Uh, you had a piece about a federal judge out of San Jose that just uh, ruled to dismiss the Second Amendment claims of some gun rights plaintiffs challenging their mandatory gun owner insurance and fee law that they passed. Um, so that's a little bit interesting, too. And this and you pointed out in your piece that this uh, ruling kind of hinged on some interesting history that we've kind of seen before. But it, it, I think there's something to it on in this case, if you want to talk about how they they came to that decision. Yeah, this is another one like the Oregon case where the judge and judge here denied a preliminary injunction. And now when he gets to the merits, he's upholding the law. Um, but I think unlike the Oregon case, these hardware ban cases and the the reasoning they've used to try and uphold these modern bans under Bruin, um, you know, has been fairly, I think it's fairly shaky uh, personally. I and mean, we'll see how the courts, how the Supreme Court chooses to handle this. I don't think that they do a particularly good job of, of, coming to the conclusion that the, that like assault weapons bans are constitutional under Bruin. Um, you know, it's a, there's a lot of roundabout lo logic that goes into it and there aren't really sh any historical analogs that they cite that are actual hardware bans. Right. Um, whereas, you know, the San Jose case also seems like it would be fairly straightforward on first glance because this is a first of its kind, uh, restriction, right? You can't own a gun. Or, uh, I mean, now the, this is the other thing too: is that San Jose has kind of walked back a lot of this ordinance and 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 said that it's not what it was when they were passing it. Right? The, the idea of this was like basically you couldn't own guns unless you buy this insurance, or you couldn't own guns unless you pay this fee to this nonprofit there to fight gun violence um, or deal with the effects of gun violence uh, to try and make. The whole idea was like, oh, make gun owners pay for the effects of gun violence um, because every gun owner is responsible for criminal uh, behavior, apparently, uh, is the is the thought here. Uh, but regardless, they've really walked that back a lot. You know, now now they're saying, you know, you, need, you don't need insurance to cover potential criminal acts that you might commit because, well, you can't legally buy insurance like that. Uh, instead, you just need accidental uh, shooting coverage. And they're arguing now that like homeowners insurance would cover this, uh, renters insurance would cover this. And so th they've really, they've really drawn back exactly what this does, but either way, the judge in this case, I think makes an argument that is, uh, closer to what might be acceptable to the Supreme court than these Oregon cases, at least in my view of it, and I'll have an analysis piece on this as well that that'll be available for, for I think it should be available now for people to read by the time this comes out. But, um, you know, the, 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 they use the surety laws. Now, I don't think these are exact matches, but the, the thing is that Bruin says um, you don't need an exact match. It doesn't need to be a, a twin. Um, and, and so, like, it, it, at least they're in the same realm of insurance like products. Because that's you know a surety is kind of a type of insurance. Now it was it was meant to be specific to somebody who was accused of being a danger for a specific reason, not just general uh, gun ownership. Or and and it was also related to gun carry, not having guns in the home. So there, I don't know that it works completely, but it is closer, I think, in a lot of ways to uh, what uh, what what the court is actually looking for in terms of Bruin. Uh, and, and historical analogies. So I, I think this at first glance seems obviously like it wouldn't withstand Bruin scrutiny because this is a brand new concept that hasn't existed before. No one's ever tried to force people to buy insurance to own firearms um, just to have them in your house, but uh, or pay a fee to a, a, non a nonprofit just to own a firearm. Um, but at the same time, you also did see uh not the majority, but Roberts and Kavanaugh in the concurrence noted that for gun carry, you can require a permitting uh, regime as long as it's shall issue and the fees aren't exorbitant. And so this fee is going to be like 25 bucks, I think. And 
they the court effectively put gun carry on the same level as gun ownership. So if you things you can require for gun carry, you may be able to require for gun ownership as well. Um, so that's where, you know, depending on the way this is implemented and the way the, the amount of money involved, they may, you know, you may see this as something that gets further um, or is at least a better argument than what some of these other uh, judges have used to uphold things like hardware bans, if that makes sense. Right. And I, you know, and I think it's interesting, like you said, we'll have to see once this ordinance finally flushes out, you know, whatever, 18 months since it's been, since it was passed, but because now other states yeah. and other jurisdictions have kind of copied San Jose, they were the mm -hmm. first, but now New the state of New Jersey, for example, in their big Bruin response bill added an insurance requirement that also includes carry insurance, not just home ownership insurance. So it's just interesting to see, you know, I, I'm sure that will be challenged once that actually takes effect. Um, and it will be interesting to see if the legal logic holds from this, that sureties become the yeah. analog that gets used. I don't know. Like, like I said, I don't, I don't know that this all really follows um, right. or that it's a, is really a perfect match. Also, I, you'd have to show that the, the other issue that I think this argument runs into is that, um, you know, at least with the hardware bands, they have tried to make an argument about how there's a modern problem caused by, you know, technological development. So mass shootings, whether this argument works or not, They've tried to make they, they've actually articulated an argument here because Bruin uh, basically Bruin says if it's if it's a condition that existed at the founding, then, you know, in order for the modern restriction, modern law, if they're trying to uh, address a, a condition that existed during the founding era with a modern law, then that modern law has to be uh, analogous to founding era gun regulations. Uh, now, if you're addressing a modern problem that's arisen from technological advancement or what have you, something that the founders didn't have to deal with at the founding, then you can be a little more, uh, you can be a little looser with what counts as a, as an analogy. You just need to find a how and why have to sort of match in, in, uh, in general terms. Now, what level of generality is a huge ongoing debate, uh, right? That we're probably going to see some answer for in this new Supreme court case, but, uh, th that's probably the weakest part of this San Jose ruling is that, you know, is gun violence generally, which is what they're trying to, or accidental shootings. That's supposedly what they're trying to address with, um, with the insurance mandate. And then, uh, gun violence generally is what the fee is trying to address were those things are those things modern creations like the the founders founders not have to deal with either of those i think that's going to be harder to um harder to a harder hurdle to to cross for this sort of uh reasoning the judge uses because there certainly weren't any actual like insurance requirements for owning a gun or fee payments to a nonprofit to deal with gun violence during the founding era. Uh, and of course this judge, I will note too, that there are also first amendment claims for the, the fee thing. Cause the, the government's forcing you to pay a nonprofit uh, that you may not agree with the message of and the sort of uh, compelled speech argument there. And the judge didn't dismiss that claim. Um, he said, basically can't, can't determine it because they haven't actually set up this whole system, this fee system, because there's no nonprofit that wants to do this yet. So um, those claims might still also be successful down the line, even under this particular judge. But and either way, I think it's it's something that on the surface would seem pretty straightforward. Uh, this law is not going to work under Bruin. But when you dig down into the legal reasoning, it's not as um, it, it's something that I think could get more traction than people might expect.